Well, I'm here today with uh, Dr. David Webster, um, who is the subject group leader for religion, philosophy, and ethics, and other things. So, <laughs> yes, so. um, but we're going to focus on religion, philosophy, and ethics Absolutely. here. Um, and um, could you tell us a little about? In terms of the teaching side, what, what, what you contribute to? Yeah, absolutely, Roy. Um, I teach to an extent on the first year modules on philosophical arguing. So, just getting students to think about reasoning, think about expression. We do we do a kind of very gentle introduction to logic. We do a certain amount of um, looking at fallacies, formal, informal fallacies. Um, we do a bit of informal fallacy hunting in newspapers, various things to get people kind of used to dealing with that, dealing with those terms. Um, and also to deal with more formal terms to do deductive reasoning, so a little bit of that. My main contributions beyond that are teaching the Hinduism and Buddhism across the second year. Um, so students are often very interested and are very conscious of aspects of Hindu thought and Buddhist thought. Um, we have 24 weeks, so across the whole second year there's Hinduism yeah. and Buddhism. Um, we normally um, also fit into that a trip to the Diwali celebrations in Leicester to see a big Hindu festival that is also celebrated by Jains and Sikhs, but you know, um, predominantly known. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. recommend it. Um, so we hope all students will come with us to, um, doesn't sound that glamorous in Leicester, but it's, oh. yeah, we have a kind of... It's quite an experience. Often so in November, so yes. it's, you know, late at night, yeah. the streets closed oh. off. So not only are we interested in um, a textual study of the, you know, the roots of Hinduism and some of the political issues now about just an election that where Hinduism and religion yes, yeah. played a big part in that. Mm -hmm. So we want students to understand that. Mm -hmm. But also some of the lived experience of what it's like to be Hindu in this country and issues that arise out of that. Um, and Buddhism often also um, there's a danger that you can study that just through the texts. Yeah. And we do enjoy engage with primary texts. There's an awful lot of fake Buddha quotes out there on mm -hmm. Twitter and people's Facebook walls. Yes. Yeah, people saying that you know Buddha says this. Well, yes, just, yeah. well let's find out. Um, so we do have a look at the textual traditions and the philosophical mm -hmm. traditions, as you might expect in a course like ours. And also, of course, Buddhism is only different types of Buddhism as well. Absolutely. So, so we want to look at the uh, Buddhism as it crops up in um, in Burma, in Thailand, in yes, Sri Lanka, yeah, yeah. in the Far East, in China and Japan. In the West. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and in relation to that, we do have a, a Buddhist um, meditation teacher who comes in during the course. Um, and on, on one hand, there's Buddhist meditation with the class if they want to do a taster. Of that, but also talks about being an American Buddhist, so being an American Buddhist who mm -hmm. follows a Sri Lankan Buddhist path. So yeah, there is yeah, um, yeah. there's room, and we sometimes have a uh, Buddhist come and talk about their Zen Buddhist practice as well. So we have yeah. we have people come and talk on the course. Mm -hmm. That's um, good because it shows what a living religion it is. You bring yeah. people in who actually you know absolutely, in this and so. uh, but that alongside some very rigorous textual study yes. yeah. of um, Buddhism as well. So that's kind of, they come out of it really having that kind of grounding in not just having kind of um, a basic knowledge of Buddhism, but having much more sophisticated ability to read the text, to know the languages uh, that exist, and to be able to kind of go and, you know, begin prodding away at the yeah. primary sutras and things. Um, and the third year I teach on a module called Love, Sex and Death. Right. So my favourite okay. title. Sounds alien. Um, part I'm sure. <laughs> Not the death <laughs> yeah. part, maybe. But, uh. Uh, all my modules I love equally, but I love the title <laughs> for Love, yeah. Sex and Death. Um, and that um, is, well, it's, you might expect Love, Sex and Death. Mm -hmm. um, we study that because the third year module from a philosophical and a religious point of view. So my colleagues also contribute to that. So um, Melissa Raphael, Professor Raphael, comes and talks about... Um, Jewish mourning customs you know, and grief and things. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a variety of contributors, although I, I tend to the majority of sessions. So we look at death from a very philosophical perspective, you know, mm -hmm. being under death and about, um, yes. awareness of death in Heidi and things like this. But I, we also talk a lot about funeral cultures. Mm -hmm. And we talk, we do quite a bit of studying the funeral industry and how it's changed. Yeah, uh, we look at, you know, you can find funeral directors on Twitter now. Yeah. Um, really, and the National Death Centre you find on Twitter, and really, is that appropriate? What are they doing? What happens at funeral director trade shows? Yeah. 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 So, how's the industry yeah. philosophical? We look at the religious aspects, the practical aspect, and the philosophical issues that go along with that. And some, some sociological claims about the history of death, Philippe Ries and people. Mm -hmm. uh, and we try and synthesize, synthesize all those together throughout the module. So, it's often very, it's an awful lot of material. 
and students have an awful lot to say about those issues. Yeah, yeah. I think you kind of almost should call that with Henderson C. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm not interested in verbal sex. Or, mm. uh, but death is something we're all going to have experience at some point, or the dying part. Anyway. Well, most of us. <laughs> <so. laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. So we have. You know, we love the sex as well. Because we, well yeah. <laughs> we didn't just have death. <laughs> and, uh, we do also briefly look at life extension advocacy as well. Those who believe that perhaps we're not going to die. Mm. That the first baby to live to a thousand years has already been born. As some claim. Yeah, it's too late for us, probably. But. It's too late, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I think it's, yeah, ever, ever closer every day. Anyway, yeah. um, so there's that module. And then a new module that we're launching this year is called Emerging Spiritualities, um, which I can just about to say, which is handy. Um, and I've been doing some uh, course uh, content creation for that recently, and that it's on um, a lot of things like hyper-real religions, right, um, yeah. UFO religions, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been creating a lot of podcasts to support that, interviewing experts, yeah. um, a variety of PhD students who are doing research on that. Um, so we want to look at some of the UFO religions, we want to look at hyper-real religions, we want to look at the evolution of religions based on things like cultural artifacts that originally were fiction. Right, right. So people who want to look at Jedi, Yes. Religions. Yes. Yeah. People want to look towards Harry Potter, want to look towards Twilight, towards mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. um, and to what extent there has been a rise in what we might call occuculture, the mm -hmm. kind of the world of the occult, esoteric. Yes. Yeah. I but, to what extent those are religions, I Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we have a module um, in our first year called New Religious Movements, mm -hmm. which is a big overview of all these. But this yes. third year module, an attempt to look at this stuff that's becoming, that's suddenly kind of snowballing now. Yeah and becoming more popular all of a sudden. So take things that might have been introduced in the first year New Religious Movements module and pay a lot more close attention to them. Yeah. Now, I recently interviewed somebody about the UFO religions mm -hmm. about how much the groups like Heaven's Gate, mm -hmm. um, of course, the mass suicides uh, back in the 90s, yeah. um, integrated Star Trek mythology into yeah. their yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, kind of talking and into their ways of speech and things. That's very kind of um, interesting. But then, mm -hmm. since then, we've seen a real explosion. We look at um, Chris Pasha's claim that there's been a, a re enchantment of the West through occuculture. That are, that we've seen this re sacralization of society through popular culture. Right, through right, okay. the kind of thing you find in your day trip class, or you yes, might go. Yes, I'm yeah. hope, certainly hoping these students will come with me for a day to Glassbury. To yes, look at occupation, yes. and to look at the way in which it's a religious experience in itself, really. Yeah, you mean just ordering, ordering a coffee. Yes, it's it a is religious deep, experience, yeah. spiritual <laughs> um, experience. Um, so it's an attempt to really look at what's what's changing about religion, not just in terms of the big religions that they study and they're studying some of the other modules, mm -hmm. but where religions going in other ways. In these ways, um, some people describe it as hyper real. Um, some people would claim come from fiction. Um, what counts as a religion? Yeah. What counts mm. as a spirituality? Mm. Um, and there's there's no shortage of things to occupy with us no, there. Well. Um, yeah. And of course, running through that as a thread, of course, are those esoteric traditions yes. yeah. in the West, you know, magical orders and things that yes. people make, yes. and yeah. the extent to which people claim that what goes on in there is transformative to person mm. Mm. or is real magic. Right. So there's, yeah. okay. um, there's an awful lot to say, and the people within those organisations don't necessarily agree. Yeah. But we, your students need, I think, not just to leave knowing about the big religions, mm. they need about where is religion going now in Europe, particularly, yes. in North America. And also, we're starting to see many of these groups having very distinctive forms in places like the former, um, former Soviet republics. So we see in, in the Balkans and things, we see yeah. the rise of very specific kinds of new age movements um, that are kind of often in Western Europe, we don't know they're there. But actually, mm the extent to which they're becoming popular is eventually going to come to our own attention. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Interesting. Okay. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Just about it. Right. Thank you. <laughs>